Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Michel Destrade. I'm the chair of applied mathematics at NYGOE, and I should be talking today uh, about uh, studying mathematical science, mathematics subjects at NYGOE. Uh, I'm going to start with a, a, a short presentation of our degrees uh, and pathways within the, the College of Science and Engineering. And after that, I'll open the, the floor to a discussion with the panel. You'll meet them in, in 10 minutes or so. Uh, I have two lecturers and two students uh, who will join me to uh, address some of the issues that, that you might have regarding a uh, degree in mathematics at NUI Boy. Okay, so let me start by um, saying, uh, you know, welcome to, to uh, Galway, welcome to the School of Mathematics. And uh, it's great that you like mathematics. Uh, if you're considering a degree in mathematics, you have several options at NUI Galway. Uh, if, you, if you like maths uh, and, and you think, uh, or you're actually sure, or you, you, you wish to end up with a mathematical degree, but at the same time, you still want to keep your options open, uh, then we, we will advise you to choose the, the BSc science degree with uh, code GY301. Uh, last year, the point requirements was 333 points. Uh, th this is a quite flexible degree. Basically, you know you like science, you know you like maths, but you're not sure which subjects you like the, the most. Is it the primates? Is it computing? Is it physics? So the way you do is that you enter this degree. This is the flagship degree of the, of the College of Science, or of the science part of the College of Science and Engineering. And in first year, you choose four subjects. So here I have shown you an example of somebody who's really crazy about mathematics. They've taken pure maths, applied maths, computer science, and physics. But you know you could have chosen something else, maybe chemistry or biology. Four subjects in first years, and that will allow you to to decide or to realize which topics you like best, or, or maybe to realize that some some subjects you like you actually don't like that much anymore. Because in the end, uh, what you want to learn in, 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 at university is, is quite uh, different from what you've learned so far uh, in the living cert. It's going to become more and more uh, intricate and advanced and exciting too. Okay, so you do that in first year and then in second year, uh, you drop one subject and similarly in third and fourth year where you could drop another subject or another two subjects. In the end, you choose what's called a pathway. You choose to uh, do a degree in one of those four subjects you had at the beginning. And the degree takes four years and uh, you, you, you will have joined a huge cohort of students, there's about 300, 350 students who choose that path every year. Okay, so that's one option. And I'll show you now uh, all the pathways you can choose within the, the BSc degree. There are 19 pathways in, in total, seven of which are in maths. And so you could choose um, a pathway in pure mathematics, applied mathematics, data science, or computing, computer science, or you could mix them to do a degree in computing and mathematics, computing mathematical studies, or in applied mathematics and mathematics. Uh, I should specify, because that comes up often, that you don't need to have done applied mathematics or computer science at the living cert level to enter those pathways. Right, we, we just assume that you, are, you enjoy maths, you've done uh, mathematics at a good level uh, in the living cert, but other than that, we start from scratch in all the other topics. Okay, so that was one way. Uh, on the other hand, there are some students who are absolutely sure that they want to end up with a mathematical degree. They know that from day one and uh, they often choose one of those uh, options, we, uh, uh, one of those degrees I'm listing here. So the first one is called the BSc Mathematical Science, which is called GY319. 
So that, that's uh, a smaller cohort now of students between 20 and 30 students who would choose that path. The second one is also a flagship uh, degree for us, the BSc in Financial Maths and Economics. So it's shared between the School of Maths and the School of Economics, GY309. And the third one, I won't talk too much about it because in fact it's offered by the College of Arts, is the BA in Mathematics and Education. That's a path for you to become a, a secondary school teacher in mathematics and applied mathematics. So it's shared between the School of Mathematics and the School of Education. But really, if you want to learn more about this, you should go onto the, the College of, Art, of Arts um, Hub and Open Day uh, platform. All right, so now I'll just give you some more details on those first two. The BSc in Mathematical Science, um, the requirements last year were 476. And um, like I said, these are for students who know from the start that they want to do mathematics. So they, they offered a really broad array of, of topics in mathematics, but there's still some flexibility uh, as the year go on. And maybe you realize you like statistics much more than applied mathematics. For instance, you can, you can increase the, the, um, the amount of statistics in degree. You can make a custom-made uh, math science degree if you want like this. So the, there's a, re a requirement to enter that degree is to have H5 or O1 at the link insert. And then just to give you an idea of first year, you will have modules in maths, apply maths, probability, statistics, computing, and then there's still one option of a module that's not mathematical in biology, chemistry, information and science or physics. After that, it's just maths, 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 really. But like I say, you can uh, change the, the weighting of each of those uh, components. And again, I should emphasize that you don't need to have done the maths or computer science in Geneva Cert to enter this degree. Again, in those topics, we start from scratch. We assume that every student has not done a maths or computer science at the link Cert. All right, uh, and the other um, degree we offer at the School of Mathematics is the one in financial mathematics and economics. So the requirements for this has been higher for 87 last year. And uh, it's, a, it's a very good blend of those topics I've listed here, math, statistics, finance, economics, and natural math. Uh, again, there's a, requirement at the living cert and just to give you an idea of what you'll be studying in first year uh yes computer science mathematics finance statistics and probability mathematical methods and mathematics this is all offered by the school of maths and then there's also economics and uh, financial management modules offered by the school of business so this is a degree that's shared between the two schools uh, i think the the share is about two-thirds mathematical modules and one for uh, business and economic module. And again, here I should emphasize that you don't need to have done computer science or business studies in your living cert to enter this degree. You can just start from zero and uh, work your way towards a degree that, that is very attractive uh, to employers, especially in the finance and in the you know, banking sectors, insurance sector, and so on and so forth. All right. So uh, just to show you our employables, our, our graduates are, I'm going to present a couple of examples of uh, recent and not so recent graduates uh, from all those degrees and show you where they've gone now. So Brandon, for instance, he graduated two years ago and uh, straight after his, his degree, it was a degree in mathematical science. He got the job at Meteoran as a meteorologist. So I'm guessing he's doing a lot of modeling there, probably a lot of data analysis and uh, you know projections, things like that. Pretty exciting position. Patrick, he graduated a few years back and he went on to do a master's and a PhD and he did so well that he never left university. I went uh, in the end to the University of Oxford where he's now a professor uh, of um, numerical analysis. All of this with a bachelor 
in mathematics, uh, BSc in mathematics from NUI Gore. Pretty impressive too. Richard, he did the, the Bachelor in Financial Maths and Economics and is now uh, on the trading floor at Goldman Sachs in New York. I think he's in charge of global trading. So really high up uh, position at Goldman Sachs. Again, very impressive. Uh, well, as Jenna, I remember teaching Jenna. She graduated, uh, graduated a few years back, uh, also with a Bachelor in Mathematical Science. And she got a job straight afterwards in the, I think she was in financial first, and now she's at PwC's, that's Pricewire Cooper House. It's a consulting financial company where she is doing uh, data analysis. Yeah, I believe she actually went on to do a master's uh, sponsored by her company for one year, and now she's doing uh, data analysis. Katrina, she uh, graduated a few years back now, 2010. She was doing the bachelor in, so she was doing that pathway in mathematics and computer science. And uh, she also got a job straight after her degree. She's now uh, in Sydney uh, working uh, as a software developer for a payment company, electronic payment company. And then Fionula, she was, it was also about 10 years ago, she did the pathway in applied mathematics. Uh, straight after a bachelor, she got a huge scholarship to do um, a PhD at Harvard University. And she's completed that in four years or five years, maybe. In any case, now she, she's back in Galway working at Medtronic as a computer uh, analyst uh, modeler of a medical device. So these are just six examples, but we have a lot more. We, we actually keep a booklet of uh, interviews of our graduates, and we should publish it very soon on the, on the uh, website. In fact, I will encourage you to uh, find out more by going on the school's website. Uh, we have a page dedicated to uh, students who are doing the Living Cert this year, or in fact, we will do it next year. It's, it's okay for them too. You, then you'll find a lot of information here and uh, you'll find more, more detail about uh, this, uh, these degrees I've just described to you. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, I shall now be hosting a panel discussion uh, with uh, our guests. So we have two lecturers, Angela, who is uh, lecturing in mathematics, and Andrew, who is lecturing in statistics. And then we have uh, two students, one that has just uh, started, Maciek, who is in first year of the mathematical science degree, and one who is finishing, Leona, which who has done uh, maths through the, the BSc uh, pathway. So I'll stop sharing now. And I'll invite my panelists. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hello, everyone. Hey, How are you everyone. Doing? Hey. Hi. Thanks for Hello. coming. I'm Good to be here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Good. Thanks. I'm going to start with you, Maciek, because uh, you're, the, you're the newest guy on the block here. Um, you, so you, you, you joined uh, in September for your first year. Um, how would you say that? that now the first is coming to an end, I guess, yeah, to, tomorrow is the last day of teaching. Uh, oh no, well, yeah, this week was the last day of teaching. Uh, how does the first year compare with your expectation or what you were imagining uh, it would be like uh, when you were studying, uh, preparing for, for a new Galway? Well, first of all, my first year was 99% uh, online, which I did not expect to happen. I was a bit disappointed by that, but I sure look it. Of course. Uh, yeah. Also, I was uh, very surprised at how uh, nice and approachable and laid back all the lecturers are. They're all really super great help. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, I was also very surprised at like how much repetition from leaving cert there is in the first semester, especially. Like I expected there to be a good bit of repetition, but. I never expected it to be this much slick. So um, yeah, that was a bit of a surprise there. Okay. Well, in a way, maybe it was good. 
uh, it was a good refresher. Yes, um, it was familiar, but was the second semester very different then? Yeah, the, the second semester was a bit different. Yeah, it built up on all the knowledge from leaving cert and the first semester. And yeah, it just keeps on building, building from everything that came before. And what about like the workload? I mean, how many hours of lecturing is there per week? How many hours of work is there for you? Uh, how, do you how does that compare to leaving cert? Well, it's kind of hard to tell since most of it is online. I was kind of given an incomplete timetable since a lot of the lectures were pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. So we weren't given an exact sign, but I'd say it's about 10 to 12 hours worth of lecture per week. And then home, homework and assignment is uh, a bit different than in secondary school because instead of getting homework every night to get done for the next day, you're given like a lot of homework at once and then that was due for like say two week, in two weeks then you had to kind of like do all that homework in two weeks you kind of have to plan it all out mm. so that was a bit different and for that workload i'd say it, it doesn't really go much past how much there was work in secondary school like i'd, I'd say there's less you you'd spend less time per day doing college work than you do leaving cert homework so if to summarize, you're saying the main difference is that you have to do a lot of planning yourself. So there's a yeah. lot less direction and you would have had in the living cert where everything was, you know, day by day, everything was directed by the teacher. Because now yeah. it's up to you. you to yeah, you have stuff. to stay on top of all the work yourself. Mm. And you have to keep up with the course because the course isn't waiting for you. Yes, that's true. It's relentless. There's a lot of material. Um, I guess yeah, we do we do assume that the students are following, but yeah, we can't check on every student. That's, that's yeah, the, the, that's what also was uh, very nice is that like the teachers don't beat you over the head with the homework. They don't go chasing after you if you don't have anything done. So yeah, and what but about it's the, all up to you. What about the material? What, was it difficult? Or was it interesting? Oh, uh, well, difficult, well, depends on how much work you put in, really. That's mainly what the difficulty is based on, but it, it was very interesting, the material covered. It was like, you know, it, it was very interesting, kept me engaged. So you still, you still, you still uh, happy with your choice of the group? Oh, yeah, very much so. Okay. Thanks, IJ. Okay, well, what, what about you? Um, Lina, you went through the, the what's called the, 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 the undenominated. What people, some people call it the undenominated yeah. BSc degree. So you, you were one of the students who had to pick four subjects in first year, yeah? yeah? Which subjects did you pick? I didn't really have a clue what I wanted to do when I started that degree. That's kind of why I chose it. I did um, a bit of an odd combination. I did earth and ocean science, computer science, physics and maths. Um, and I kind of just wanted to try a few different things, but I knew that I was interested in physics and maths mainly. Um, and yeah, so that was just kind of a bit of a potluck, <laughs> but it was good. And did, did you think you would like all four subjects? Um, how, how did that evolve through the first year? Yeah, so I wasn't expecting to like maths as much as I did. <laughs> Coming from secondary school, I actually never did that well in maths in secondary school. I kind of, it was a shot of the dark pick in it. And then as I kind of worked through the first year material and as uh, Magic said, like the lectures were all so approachable and friendly. I was like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So how did, what did you do for second year then? For second year, I did, um, I think I did maths and physics and then just chose electives. And then I narrowed down to maths for my third and fourth year. Um, I see. So you drop, you drop earth and ocean science. And, and computer science. Computer the first science. Year. Yeah. So you have two subjects. So you can do that. You can keep two subjects and then fill the rest with electives. That, that yep. means like optional. Uh, Material. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. And have, the, yeah, the optional. Choice subjects. there. Yeah, so the optional subjects that you okay. can pick from are actually, they're kind of largely influenced by what subjects you chose in first year. 
so even if you've dropped a subject like let's say I dropped computer science um after first year but in my final year now I'm still doing computer science modules as optional modules and even though I didn't do applied maths I can still have still done quite a few applied maths modules and quite a few physics modules along the way despite the fact that I'm not actually getting my degree in those but it really gives a broad sort of make your own degree sort of thing which is really nice excellent and then um what about the level of the, of, of the, the level of difficulty well was it really hard to go from leaving cert to university and then each year was was it harder and harder or was it just sort of steady progress towards an understanding of the whole subject yeah so um uh, what magic said also ran through there of how it really builds up so like there's a lot of repetition in first year that then builds up in the second semester and then I found that was kind of uh, like a similar structure the uh, for second and third and fourth year where a lot of the subjects would start the first half of the module would be repetition and revision of what you might have done in precursor modules and then the last six weeks are really then the new stuff um, every module really kind of hammers home that repetition and that um, building on stuff that you know already nothing's coming out of left field so mm -hmm. even though it's an increase in difficulty you're really um, guided through that quite well I think by the department um, which is good. <laughs> okay. And then what about um, progression I mean how does that work how does the stream go from one year to another? Uh, what about assessment exams or yeah that? so um uh, yeah the ca is um great actually this year it's been even better because um, what's, what's ca <laughs> continuous assessment sorry <laughs> the continuous assessment is great um especially compared to secondary school because in secondary school even though you're doing these homework assignments every single day you're not actually getting any grade for them or anything it's all based on that last exam but here in university, every subject, at least 40% of your grade goes for your continuous assessment. So those assignments that you get that are due every two or three weeks. And it's one of those things where you can generally pass the module even if you don't do so well in those. But at the same time, if you put the effort into doing well in those, it takes a lot of pressure off the exams. Which is good. So the exams are the other part of your, of your mark, I guess, of your year mark. Yes, um, which obviously exams are exams, they're never fun, <laughs> but um, they're not too bad, um, you know, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of support services within the college as well, and there's room for, like, if you are struggling, there's, you know, there's this counselling service and everything like that, who are more than willing to help you uh, defer them or anything like that if you need to, so don't feel like they're the be all and end all either, you know. Very good. Okay, I move on to Andrew now. Andrew, you're, you're lecturing in statistics, right? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been lecturing in statistics here for a few years. So, um, I will have a question. Yeah, well, what if you wanted to, to do a career based on statistics? So, I mean, career okay. in statistics, whatever that means. But yeah, statistics, whether that's job in statistics. data science, statistics, data analytics, but if you're interested what, what, in what, what kind of what kind of route will you will you take at any way? Well, I think there's actually a number of routes. Any of the different degree programs that you've outlined already could end up with a career in data in, in statistics. You could come in and, and do the uh, GY301 science degree and follow a data science pathway. Um, and you would get up, you would take many of our statistics uh, courses as well as different ones in computer science. Um, if you follow the, um, the math science uh, degree program, then as third and fourth year uh, come, come, um, start, you get lots of different choices. So you can choose there the different flavors of mathematics, whether that's pure mathematics, applied maths, uh, more computing side, or indeed statistics. So uh, there's plenty of options there. And then even in financial maths, we, you get taught lots of different statistics courses. So any of those routes will actually still be open at the end to say, well, now I think I'd like to keep doing this and analyze data after college. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's good. Um, do you reckon it's, 
it's easy to get a job if, if you are a statistical bent to your degree. I think so. I think everybody could probably appreciate we're probably in a place now where there's been more data shown on our TV screens in the last year than there's been in the previous 50 years of television. <laughs> um, so the amount of data that's out there crying out to be analyzed is growing exponentially every day. We don't want to hear too much about exponential growth, but it's there in data. And the methods of collecting data are increasing all the time, but the, you know, the people there to analyze them is not growing at that rate. So there is, there's a plethora of jobs available. You could probably pick your field. Do you want to analyze data from sports, from finance, from pharmaceutical companies, in medicine? You know, what, what type of data interests you? And then pursue a career in that. But the people in those domains really need people to analyze their data. Excellent. Um, I believe that uh, students who are interested in the financial maths and economics uh, degree, they often ask about uh, actuarial, uh, an actuarial career or, you know, actuarial ex uh, exemption or... Uh, yeah. So, yeah, the financial maths uh, and economics degree here at NUI Galway is set up in a way to exempt you from some of the actuarial exams. So to explain, uh, to become an actuary, uh, you have to be accredited by an actuarial board, and that involves taking postgraduate exams. Um, that could take between three and six years after you leave NUI Galway to complete those actuarial exams. But what our financial maths and economics program here at NUI Galway does, it, it allows you, if you do well at your modules, to be exempted from three of those exams um, that you would take afterwards. So that would make your life easier after you leave. Now, what would generally happen for, for someone who wants to be an actuary, do the financial maths and economics program here, then you would go working in an actuarial company. And while in your first few years working with that company, you'd take your actuarial exam. Much like people who want to become a solicitor, you work and, and then you take these exams bit by bit, they're run twice a year. Um, you can pick which ones you want to do each year and you build up and eventually you become a qualified actuary and all the good stuff that comes with that. Excellent. So now well, what if you were hesitating between a degree in math science and a degree in financial maths? Why yeah, how would you choose? I mean, that's, that's a question we really often get at the open day because you know you're interested in maths and we've got these two major courses that say mathematics in them, so which should I choose? So the Obvious answer is that if you really want to apply those math skills that you've shown in the Leaving Cert to uh, financial information, then the financial maths uh, program is for you. The financial maths program doesn't have much choice in it. As you go through the years, you do subjects that are outlined. You don't have a choice in very much at all, um, and you'll be taking subjects in economics. On the other hand, if you want a bit of choice, you're smart, you, you know, I like maths, but I'm not sure if I would want to analyze financial data. Maybe I want to uh, end up in applied maths. Maybe I want to end up in computer science. Then the math science program or the general science program is the place for you because you can kind of decide in your university life what type of maths uh, you'd like to do. Um, and, you know, that could be attractive for some people. And it doesn't mean that you don't, you, you're not allowed to analyze financial data after you come out of, the math science degree, you can still go after that th those jobs in gold, Goldman Sachs if you want. Absolutely, yeah. Like I shown in, in those examples. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks, Andrew. No bother. Okay, Angela, hi. Hi. You're, you're lecturing in, in maths, right? In pure maths. I am. Um, yes. Lina was talking earlier about how the university is good at supporting students who are struggling with. Um, you know, maybe with discipline, uh, discipline or planning or anxiety and things like that. What, what about support for math students? Is there something specific for math students? If they struggle yeah, well, with the maths, maths exam, maths homework, maths subject? Yeah, well, first of all, to echo both uh, Matchek and, and Klina, we, we actually put special care uh, when designing our modules to, to be maximally supportive, uh, supportive also of you know, very diverse backgrounds. So there are tutorials and, and workshops along with, uh, with the classical lectures. But in addition to that, we have, we have SAMS, our uh, support uh, center, support for undergraduate mathematics and statistics. This is, well, used to be a drop-in center and despite the challenges of the last year has adapted uh, very well to, to offer 
its services uh, online to students. So this is a center where our students find support from uh, qualified and trained tutors. They can go there both uh, as a to ask help for with, with their homework or with something from their modules that you know they're struggling with both individually or in small groups and that's just a service that we we offer and, and students are very welcome to to drop in uh, or to to book a to book a slot to to get their uh, their support is it still going on uh, remotely yeah, it's going on remotely as adapted. Uh, it's 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 actually uh, increasing the number of hours that it's offering because, of course, now uh, being closer to the the, the exams uh, is a time where students might uh, need a little more for yeah. help. So yeah, excellent. Yeah. And then uh, some prospective students they, they might have heard us talk about the way we you know we could specialize into. Uh, one area of mathematics that we like more than others, but but if they do that, will will that then you know limit their opportunities for for careers afterwards if they choose to specialize? I don't know in statistics or in computer science or kind well, of forget about the rest. Yeah, I, I'd say that that's definitely not the case, as you showed us in your slides with your portfolio of former graduates. I mean, there are, uh, you know, you can see there are plenty of people graduating from the same degree and that have so diverse careers and so on. In fact, very often, I mean, the, 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 one of the great advantages of a mathematical degree is its, its flexibility. And, and this is uh, what, so what, what employers um, seek is not just the notions or the the individual module, but it's 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 really the variety of skills that you that you that you gain while studying mathematics, or analytical thinking, or problem solving. This is something that really goes beyond the content of a single module or the specialized path that you that you choose in your degree. That's true. That's true. Um, and then there's something a bit uh, specific. I was saying that you could do uh, mathematics and computing or you could do mathematical studies and computing. What, what's the difference between those two courses, the course called mathematics and the course called mathematical studies? Well, so I'd say that choose, if, if you know that you, know, you want maths as one of the core subjects, then MA180 mathematics is what what you want to choose at the very beginning. These will leave open all the doors for all the pathways that you showed us, this very nice picture with all the seven pathways, including mathematics. All of them uh, are open to you if you have chosen MA180 mathematics. Instead, if you, you know, think of mathematics as rather more instrumental to, to another, uh, you know, to other sciences, for instance, you'd you'd rather specialize in some of the life sciences or, or physics and so on, then perhaps MA1861 uh, MA mathematical studies is, is, is the choice for you. Thanks, thanks for that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Maybe I'll, I'll round up now with the, with the students one more time. Do, do you guys have any idea or any hope or any projection of what you want to do after your degree? Or is it too early to ask? Lina? Um, yeah, so I'm currently in the process of like looking at and applying for different postgraduates. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do. Um, alternatively, I'm hoping to go into either finance or data analysis in the long term. Um, so I'm looking at kind of applying for graduate programs along that line. And I'm kind of just in the process of applying for things and hoping I hear sure. back. <laughs> Yeah, and then and preparing your, your exams as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's tough. What about you, my check? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Just something that involves maths or science, I'm not really worried about of that course. yet. Yeah, just, just living the college life at the moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> as much as I can. Okay. And then, would you guys have any advice that you could give to? To yourself when you were a living cert student? Anything yeah. that you would have liked to know then before you started you embarked on your degree? Yeah, so I would have liked to know just quite how supportive 
university staff are and that everyone really just wants you to do well you know <laughs> like the lecturers and the support staff all just want you to do your best and also that like it's hard to manage your time it's hard to like do anything else other than college and not feel guilty like oh I should be studying especially if you're a high achiever and it's important to kind of leave it at the door at a certain point and do other things <laughs> with your life um, and not get followed up in that kind of mentality of I'm never doing enough because you are <laughs> you've made it here that's great and just have fun and enjoy being in college and make the most of it use what supports and services are there to your advantage and make the best of it. Excellent. And you, Mark Jack? Yeah, like Kleena said, don't feel guilty about not doing college 24 mm seven. -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Just like, put in a decent amount of work and you should be fine. And also uh, don't worry about not being able to make friends. It's actually incredibly easy to make friends in college. <laughs> Like, even online, like, I was worried I wouldn't be able to meet anyone because it was like 100% online. And then, you know, we, I kind of just started hanging out with people on Zoom calls after lectures. And yeah. That's nice. That's yeah. nice to hear. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting until you leave, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> and all the fun starts, yeah. <laughs> Hello, yeah. Okay, well, thanks very much. I, I, I want to thank my panelists and uh, I, I think that was very useful and that uh, the audience will have learned a lot from you all. I should say that, you know, you can contact anybody at the school at any time. Uh, you just go on the website, pick up any name there and you can write. If you have a specific question, they will be able to answer it or to direct it at somebody who will be able to answer it. So don't hesitate. Thanks very much. And, uh, Thanks, uh, for watching. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.